Well, good morning. Welcome to worship at College Place, either in person or online. We welcome you for worship and invite you to join together with us in the call to worship. Jesus said, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. Let us act justly. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. Let us love tenderly. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Let us walk humbly with our God. May we see Christ in one another, that we may be healers and peacemakers in Christ's name. And let us pray together our opening prayer. You, O Lord, have called us to watch and pray. Therefore, whatever may be the sin against which we pray, make us careful to watch against it, and so have reason to expect that our prayer will be answered. In order to perform this duty aright, grant us grace to preserve a sober, equal temper and sincerity to pray for your assistance. Amen. That is a, a prayer from Susanna Wesley, John Wesley's mother. Uh, so that's one, a little bit of the archaic language for it, but I thought it was wonderful, especially as March and Women's History Month, that we use that uh, and uh, certainly uh, the influence of Susanna Wesley on John Wesley was was great in a lot of different ways. Um, our New Testament lesson this day comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. Listen now for the word of God. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has received us has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And let us stand together for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 through 3 and 11 through 32. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in destitute living. When he had spent everything... A severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough to spare? And here I am dying of hunger." I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father, but while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost in his fam. And they began to celebrate. 
Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked, What was going on? He replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed a fatted calf, because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when the son of yours came, comes, came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. all three of your words. Well, um, one of my favorite things to do is to, uh, when I go to a church or am at a church and, and sometimes look behind the pulpit and see what you see back here, it's always entertaining. A couple weeks ago, I realized I, I've been missing one of my favorite uh, travel mugs. And it's this one. It says, Life is Good on it. And it's still got some coffee in here, I think. Uh, but anyway, I, I, I was pleasantly surprised as I looked under the pulpit and I found it. You know, you just never know the, the excitement that you get. 
We used to, I used to work at the Tinderbox in Winston-Salem as my high school job, and we would sell all kinds of kind of quirky little stuff. Uh, one of the things we had was were, were lighters. You know, it's a place for pipes and tobaccos and cigars and cigarettes and those things back before it became public enemy number one. Uh, and, and people would come in and they'd look at these fancy lighters and they're like, oh my Lord, I'd never pay $400 for a lighter. I would lose it. And the line that we always used in the store was, well, if it's important enough and you pay enough for it, you'll find it. You start retracing, you're, you're looking for the things that are most important to you. They kind of bugs you when you can't find it. And the more special it is to you, the more important it becomes. And the more obsessed we get about finding it. This is the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15. Oftentimes in seminary courses and, and New Testament classes or even Bible studies, it's referred to as the lost chapter of Luke. It's not that it's lost, we can't find it. It's all about that the, everything in the story is about being lost and being found. And so, so in this passage, we're, we're the, 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 the uh, youngest son goes to the father and says, look, give me, what, give me what, I, I, what you want me to have. I'm out of here. Give me your stuff and I'm gone. And so in the culture, in the Jewish culture, this is kind of an, a, a true anomaly of a thing to do. Uh, there's some debate about what is all in property sharing. Sometimes in the property it would go just singular to the eldest of the sons. Other times it would be divided, but it always took place not at when the father was still alive, but at the father's death. And so for this youngest son to go up to his father and say, hey, give me my stuff, means I, you, you can die if you want to. I really don't care. I just want my stuff. And so the father, being the father that's kind, gracious evidently, gives him half of what he owns. And the son in a couple days packs up, takes off into a foreign land, away from home, away from the life he had known, and went off. I got to thinking about budgeting a little bit. I've noticed one thing in being an adult and living into what it means to be an adult running a household, that my discretionary spending fund has a tendency to run out long before the bills are all covered. Well, I've got to have this. I need this. Life will not be complete without it. I know it's more than I'm supposed to spend, but I'll make up for it next month. Do you know how that goes? It's like, gee, man, only if everything would be bought on 0% interest for the rest of my life, it would be great. I'll eventually get it paid off. I just need that. I've got to have it. But yet, there are bills to be paid. There's stuff to do. There's necessities that must take place. There's gas to buy in the car. Somebody said the other day, they said, I don't normally brag about luxurious items that I purchase, but I just got a tank of gas. But this, this youngest son, this, he got all, all he had, was going to get from the father, and he took off, and in just a little bit of time, he wasted it. He was gone. I don't know. He could have went to the casino for one night, and it was gone. thought he was going to make it big. But he didn't work that way. Got a job. Not a bad plan. He got a job for a Jewish person feeding the pigs. So even the pigs, the unclean animals, had something to eat, and he didn't. Comes to a census a little bit and says, Oh, I got an idea. I'll go back to Dad. He's so kind and gracious and loves me. He'll take me back. I'll apologize. So he heads on back toward home. And gets there. And the father somehow sees him. Something tells me the father had been looking just a little bit, waiting, hoping something might change, that the youngest son might return. I don't know, I don't know, I wasn't there. But he sees him coming back down the road, and the father runs out to meet him. 
embraces him in his arms, brings the robe, kills the fatted calf, places a ring on his finger. He has been reestablished. He's come home. The youngest son. Maybe this is one of those great stories that's really good for us to hear in Lent. Sometimes we get a little far away or our ideas and what's important to us stray from the heart of the gospel. Chasing after God and knowing who God is and loving God and God's people. Do our own thing, our own way. And after doing it a while, we realize how hollow and empty it leaves us. Well, it's time to come home. Gather up our things, whatever's left of it, whatever energy we have, whatever life we have left in us, and go home. But a lot of us... Now, some of you have been sitting in the same pew here all for an awful long time. Especially the last two years since we reshuffled pews and created safe distances. It's always entertaining. But I say it feels like sometimes we have more than we used to when everybody would sit in one little section. We spread out. So there's a part of me that realizes that the, the younger brother kind of crowd isn't necessarily here this morning. It, in somewhere, and I don't remember if this was in seminary or college talking about this, that we talk about that. If you look in, in oftentimes in the little Bibles that we have, the heading for this passage is called the parable of the prodigal son. We've heard it all of our life. Oh, it's all about the prodigal son. It took me a whole while to figure out. One of my professors said, he said, those little headings over those passages that kind of give you a little clue what it is, he says, that's something an editor put in the Bible. That's not the word of Scripture. So, so one of my professors would, would suggest that this wasn't the parable of the prodigal son, but was the parable of the two sons. So, so in this parable, it's the older brother, the older brother that's been sitting in his church pew every Sunday for a while now doing what he's supposed to do, taking care of business, making sure the family farm keeps going, being the responsible party. I remember Rusty Inman at Boone Church, my freshman year of college, referred to this. He always said that the youngest son was hanging out down at the pig and chick on Saturday night, and the older son was home studying the Sunday school lesson. It's about a 25-year-old illustration. And that older son had been hanging around the farm doing what was supposed to be done and just kept going. And all of a sudden, coming in from the field on a hot, sweaty day, he hears all this music and this party going on and wants to know what in the world is happening. He's tired. just wants to sit down, get a cool glass of water, take a break calls somebody out what, what's going on in the house oh your younger brother's home well I'm so excited I can't wait to see him again you know well, what's all this music about oh your father father's called for a party a celebration killed the fatted calf to eat meat in this culture was not something we do we, we Americans especially eat a lot of meat in our diet, oftentimes, it's good, it's tasty. And yet, at the same time, we know it's really not good for our bodies, so maybe perhaps we should do a little better on that. I'm preaching to the choir for me, one. But, but, but the older brother who's done all the work, who's kept the farm going, who's been there day in and day out, says, you hadn't even killed a goat for me and my friends. And you just lay a big old spread for this sorry, no good, good for nothing younger brother of mine. My granddad used to have a line is a uh, well, you know, they just kind of Freddie Freeloader. And I can see some of that. Some of us stay around, we stick around, we do what we're supposed to do, we we 
keep the farm going. And yet the party's for somebody else. <laughs> Don't you love it? The thing I always remember is that the father came out and pleaded with the elder son to come in and join the party. The thing that always quandaries me the most is, did the older brother go in or did he just stay on the porch? You know, that's kind of how it is in God's kingdom. Think about it in this, this kind of this, this idea of what it means for traditional conversion experience. When a child or a person young accepts the faith and comes in and stays after it, just carrying right on. You know, the ones who use their faith to influence them in their life to do good for other people. And then the younger people that are just all over. You know, usually when somebody talks about a classmate that becomes a preacher, they're like, I didn't see that coming. I would have never thought that would have happened. And yet, as, as, as it goes on, and as I've experienced life a little bit, I realize that the great, there's a great joy and there's a great peace and there's a great presence of following after God for longer in our lives. Sweeter as the years go by is how the old song goes, and that kind of fits the case. The younger son out squalling the property all the way and leaves him with nothing. He missed out on that opportunity to be around his father and in the family farm. And yet when the elder son has been there been able to be around the father be able to keep the farm going has the gratitude and appreciation of the father and everything that he sees is his on the farm and he's still bitter and aggravated But I think the heading in the Bible, that little editor's mark about this story, might be best served by saying, parable of a loving father. Ah, you know, you got two characters, the younger brother and the older brother, but the real gift in the story is that father. Ready for acceptance, to welcome, return to express appreciation for keeping the farm going and the love. And all that is, is the Father's. To offer to, to, to both sons. And the Father, even the, the responsible party, can't talk the Father out of making irrational decisions about what ought to be done. You ought not be having a party for Him. And the Father says, it's mine, I'll do with what I want, and I'm going to. Because the son of mine who was dead has returned. Hmm, what good news in the gospel. Here in Lent. Doesn't matter if we're the youngest son that's a squanderer or the older responsible party who's always done what always should be done. It's the father that loves both, cares for them, invites them back and encourages them and nurtures and sustains them. If I looked really close somewhere down in my soul and in my being, I probably would see a little part of me that's the younger son. And there's part of me that's the older son. You know, I got my ideas and my hurt feelings and, you know, all that stuff, that baggage that we carry around. And yet the gift of the gospel is the fact that God loves us and cares for us wants us to have all that is the very best of life the power of the gospel to take root in our life and in our world to transform and to change to change our vision and our lenses of how we see others around us oh it's difficult it's challenging sometimes but 
the Father's always there, on the ready, watching and waiting and hoping. All glory, honor, and power be to the one who was, who is, and who is to come. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to hear your voice again. We ask you to guide us through the season of Lent as a time of reflection on the sacrifice your son made for us and as a time for us to grow further in our faith and understanding. We give thanks for this community that you have built that strives to follow your example followers who seek to do justice, love others as you do, and work to create a better, better world. We pray for those around us who are dealing with feelings of loneliness, those who are grieving, and those who are sick. We especially lift up those who have lost loved ones, for those who feel lost and alone. We pray for your comfort and peace to touch those lives. We pray for those working in areas that keep our daily lives on track in the midst of this time of uncertainty. We lift up those working to supply our food and those working in stores that allow us to shop. We lift up all the workers that are strained during this time and pray for moments of rest and your strength to reassure them. We also lift up the places in our world that are in turmoil we especially lift up the Ukraine. We pray that wars may end, that hate may not endure, that bitterness and strife will cease, and that we may live together as your children. Finally, help us stand up against evil in this world. Help us to work for racial justice, seek freedom for those who are oppressed, and speak out against hatred and violence and bigotry around us. Help us to live into the legacy of those who have gone before us and to seek to make the world a better place for all who will come after. We pray all of this in your loving name and through the power of the Holy Spirit as together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Good morning, everybody. My name is Tyler. I uh, serve here. I'm an intern here at College Place during the spring semester. Um, I'm finishing up at Greensboro College. Uh, we're honored to have you worship with us today at College Place, whether you're in person with us or online. Um, we're glad you took some time out to spend with us. If this is your first time here, uh, we would uh, invite you to fill out one of our welcome cards in the back of the pews so that we might get connected with you. And if you are a college student, there's a bright neon card um, in the pews as well that you can fill out and you can drop those in the offering plates um, and we'll keep you connected. Tonight, our Sunday Night Live worship service will meet here at 7 p.m. Um, that's our contemporary worship service, and there will also be communion, which is open to everyone at that time. Our Sunday morning Bible study will continue to meet next week at 10 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Um, our listening circles will continue this week on Thursday. Uh, remember, the time has changed, so if you're... Um, in a group, you'll meet 15 minutes earlier this week than you did last week, so just be mindful of your time. And if you would like to help with Ukrainian relief and refugees, please give, please give to the United Methodist Committee on Relief, and you can mark your envelope or check with Omcor and drop that in the offering plates. Um, this Easter, you can buy flowers for Easter or donate $5 for flowers and mark it on your check or envelope for your donation. Each week we worship together and seek ways to serve God in this community. We now have the opportunity to give God a part of what God has given to us and support our ministry together. You're invited to give in the offering plates at the church entrances. You can also give online through the QR code in the pew or on our website. Just click the donation button or you may mail your check or drop it off at the church office. We thank you for supporting the work and the ministry here at College Place. And I would ask everybody to stand so we may read the statement of faith uh, of the Korean Methodist Church. We believe in the one God, creator and sustainer of all things, father of all nations, the source of all goodness, and beauty, all truth and love. We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifested in the flesh, our teacher, example, and redeemer, the savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and prayer, and in grace equal to every need. We believe in the word of God cont contained in the Old and New Testaments as sufficient rule both faith and of practice. We believe in the church, those who are united in the living Lord for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God as the divine rule realized in human society and in the family of God, where we are all brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness and in life everlasting. Amen. <laughs>
People of faith, may you be reminded of the goodness of God, of the welcome arms and embrace and of love of God. And may you go forth into the world to share that love that you've experienced with others that you meet. Go in peace in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.